In every sound system, there is a complex arterial network of copper conductors carrying different types of audio signals. And at the genesis of this conductor are connectors that unite this cable infrastructure to the different components. And this cable connector is where human interaction can patch the different signals to various places. The connector can tell you a lot about the signal. Consequently, the cable connector can be your weakest link in the entire signal chain. If you don't believe this video is worthy of your attention, let me show you a classic situation I see more times than you could guess. I think this little mixing console takes the cake for the amount of adapters used in one auditorium. XLR, gender bender on the XLR, so this is a male to male. And we've got a male to quarter inch, quarter inch to eighth inch, eighth inch, back to quarter inch. So we got one, two, three, four, five. Gang, thanks for stopping by the channel. My name's Jude, I'm glad you checked in. This is gonna be a good one today. On the market, there's a plethora of audio connectors available from multiple manufacturers. In this video, I'm showcasing the eight pro audio connectors I use the most, and I'll throw in a few honorable mentions too. If you're tight on time, I've noted the different connectors as chapter markers reflected across the timeline below. Before we dive in, there's a few, few housekeeping items that we need to cover. Number one, more times than not, if there's a continuity problem, it's usually not the conductor or the wire, it's the connector. With low voltage and low amperage signals, it doesn't take much oxidation before it can affect the quality of the audio that passes through the connector. This is Deoxit G5. It's a liquid continuity agent that can help clean and protect the contact points within the connector. Cold solder joints, or excessive insulation that's been stripped back, or in this case, the wrong connector for the wrong application is like a cancer that can have a long lasting negative effect on your connection. If you need help learning how to solder, check out our video, Six Simple Steps and Secrets for Successful Soldering. This 12 minute video will give you the basic techniques to help you achieve advanced skills. And any day you get to solder is a good day. Number two, we need to learn the proper names and industry terms. Whatchamacallit, doohickey, and thingamajig do not build confidence or inspire greatness when teaching or leading others. The jacks are the part of the connector that sit on the panel or the end device. The plugs or line connector are the connector that is fastened to the end of the cable or the conductor. Number three, in pro audio, a gold plated connector is an unneeded expenditure. Silver connectors will do just fine. And number four, the most important thing to remember is this. A loose mechanical connection is a hot mechanical connection. Don't add unnecessary resistance to the signal chain. Good solder joints, tight screws, and properly seated connectors will help ensure clean audio signals. The phone connector. This, my friends, is the most iconic connector in pro audio. It dates back to 1877. 1877, we're using a connector that is over 140 years old. It was first used on the telephone switchboard and the exchange systems. In early 1900, Henry Clausen and Western Electric refined the plug, and this is what they came up with, and it's what we're still using today, the quarter inch jack. It comes in two options, quarter inch tip and sleeve, quarter inch tip ring sleeve. We would call this a balanced jack, this would be an unbalanced jack. Some people in the consumer market would call this a stereo or a headphone jack, and others would call this a mono or a guitar cable. Either way, multiple different types of signals can run down these connectors. In the late 1970s, we were introduced to the Walkman, and the Walkman is what brought this cable onto the market. This is an eighth inch tip ring sleeve. Now this cable is used in the consumer, not the pro audio. So we would not call this a balanced, we'd call this a stereo headphone. This is a cool little adapter on the end of my Sony headphones, eighth inch, but then we could also thread this into a quarter inch stereo. 
2005 ushered in the era of the smartphones and we started to see this little honey show up on the market. This is a tip ring ring sleeve, still within the eighth inch family, but we're now adding one more conductor into the signal chain. It's commonly wired in the CTIA AHJ wiring code, left earphone, right earphone, ground, and microphone. They offer the quarter inch and the eighth inch in right angle options. These are great if you have a tight quarter or if you don't want your wire coming straight out, you want it to hang down. This is a great option. They're pricey, but it's well worth it. Even though this quarter inch connector is the most iconic, it is the worst mechanical connection in Pro Audio and it's the one that I try to stay away from the most. There's 360 degrees available of continuity, but when this plug is mated into the jack, you'll note that we're not even taking a fraction of that 360 degree available continuity. This means that we're pulling audio from just a small point on the connector. That's going to allow oxidation to grow quicker and then allow us to have dropouts or scratchy or dirty audio. Not only that, when you disconnect the jack, if this channel of audio is turned on in your sound system, you'll get a or a buzz or a hum because the tip, which is the positive conductor, is grounding out or shorting out against the sleeve, which is the ground or the negative conductor. I try not to use these at all costs. Another thing that's confusing is this is the only plug in Pro Audio that's available in mic level, line level, or speaker level audio. So be careful, if you're using this jack, make sure you understand what level of audio you're using. And then also be aware that this is the worst mechanical connection. The phono connector. This little dude right here is the phono connector. Not to be confused with this, this is the phone connector. RCA, or Radio Corporation of America, had an invention called the phonograph. They wanted their own unique style of plug, so they came up with this. It's a tip and sleeve. Today, we use this on sending audio to recording devices or bringing audio in from recording devices into the mixing console. We can also use it as a digital audio, and then we can use it as a video send. In the 1950s, there was a push of home hi-fi audio. Now that's mainly used on the consumer market, so that's where we see this a lot today, is on your home theater sound systems. And it's about 12 dB lower than the pro audio side that we'd use. The banana plug. 1924 General Radio introduced this to us. Well, I, mean, I wasn't around in 1924, but if you were, they introduced <laughs> the banana plug. In 1924, General Radio brought this onto the market. The spring shape gives it a banana shape, so that's how they came up with the name banana plug. This is an excellent mechanical connection and it's used mainly in speaker level audio connections. Now we don't use it a lot today, but it's still handy to have and you'll see these used on home audio uh, amplifiers too. This is a solderless connection and you run your copper conductor just through that hole right there. You take a small little slotted screwdriver you run that screw up and it smashes the conductors against the plate in here and makes a great mechanical connection. The five-way binding post. Not long after this banana plug came as a mainstay connector, in the 1940s, General Radio standardized the three-quarter inch spacing on the five-way binding post, which allowed the banana plug to mate into the back of the five-way binding post. The black grounding tab denotes which is the polarity side of negative and goes on this black binding post. The five-way binding post can accept a bunch of different options. The banana plug. My favorite, a crimp lug or a fork or a spade. You can take these crimp wire on there and it sits right behind the plastic. You can also run a bare copper conductor into the hole, tighten the wire down on that. You can also wrap wire, like you're wrapping wire around a screw and then it pinches that. And then finally, you can crimp a ferrule onto the end of the copper conductor and lead it in through that hole that is through this post and then you can tighten it down. One final note, make sure you don't tin your copper conductors. Tinning would be getting solder onto the bare copper conductor to add strength or make it solid. We don't want that. We want that copper conductor, if you're wrapping it around the post, we want that to smash and spread out. That way we get maximum mechanical connection. This was an industry standard into the late 70s and we would see this on the back of amplifiers and then also test equipment as well. This is a better mechanical connection than the quarter inch jack. The XLR. 
The 1950s also ushered in this iconic plug. This is the standard 3-pin XLR. This is the most common plug used in your sound system. In the 1950s, a man by the name of James Cannon had perfected the plug. It's called the Cannon X. 1955, he added the locking or the latch mechanism. And then shortly after that, he added the rubber insulation around the conductors. So that's the Cannon X, Cannon XL, Cannon XLR. That's the evolution of the plug. Anytime you're around old timers in the trade, they may say, hand me a Cannon plug. They're talking about this, a standard 3-pin XLR. This is not only one of the best electrical connections in your sound system, it's also the only plug that is gender specific in the way the audio travels. The male sends the audio and the female receives it. So imagine the end of a microphone looks like this. The microphone is sending the signal to the microphone cord, which is the female. Not only do we use this for analog balanced audio, we can use it for digital audio, the AES protocol. We can also use it in DMX lighting systems, and there's a bunch of other applications that you'll see this used. When you get into DMX lighting, they may call for a, a four or a five pin. There's a five pin XLR, that's the plug. There's the jack. This is a six pin XLR. These get really hard to solder. You gotta be really good with them, but they're great if you're running multiple signals through one connector. They'll go all the way up to a 10 conductor XLR. Not only do we have standard XLRs, we have mini XLRs as well. This is a TA3F, as in female. TA4F, Sure Wireless uses this to connect the wireless element into their body pack to transmit audio. A mini XLR, those are not fun to solder. And finally, I want you to check this out. Ray Rayburn did a phenomenal paper on the history and the evolution of the XLR. The link's in the notes below. I hope you check it out. Ray Rayburn was gonna be a guest on this video, but earlier this year, he passed away. So I wanna send my condolences to his family and then the audio community that he was a part of. The Euroblock or Phoenix Connector. The Euroblock is short for European Style Terminal Block. And relatively speaking, this is a newcomer to the market, but it's been in the industry for a long time. This is a connector that allows mic level, line level, or speaker level connections to be made in a small footprint. It's a really nice mechanical connector. It's not as good as the XLR, but it's way, way better than the quarter inch jack. Now I said mic line and speaker levels all can go through the Euro blocks. Well, let me show you what I'm talking about. This connector will allow mic level or line level communications. This connector is speaker level only. So even though we're using the same style of connector, a speaker level can never be used in a micro line application and vice versa. This is a good option for space saving devices. So this is a four channel amplifier. You have your four channels coming in and you have your four channels leaving. One rack unit, four in and four out. It's clean and it's quick. It's also another solderless connector. You take a small little screwdriver and you can spin the lugs and you can crimp down on any wire you stick in. Now this is another connector that you don't want to pre-tin the wire before you stick it in. You want the wire to be bare copper so when you tighten down the lug, it splays out the wire and it smashes it and makes the best mechanical connection possible. Euro plug or Phoenix connector. The Phoenix connector is slang because Phoenix contact is who makes the Euro block. The barrier strip. This is one of the ugliest connectors that you'll see, but it is the very, very best mechanical connection you can get. Now this was a standard on the back of amplifiers for many years. I still use these as a place where I need to jump stuff around real quick, or if it's a test point, or if I'm doing a splice where I need maximum continuity. You take a spade lug and you tighten it down behind the screw and you just pass audio across the lugs. The barrier strip comes from these little barriers that separate these terminals. So continuity just passes through and it doesn't crosstalk on any of the other lugs. The barrier strip. This is a great, great mechanical connection. The speak on connector. This, my friends, is my very, very favorite connector. I love this thing. And on top of that, Neutrik, who makes the speak on, they took a classic problem that we've lived with for over a hundred years. And that's the bad continuity that's the ability where these can pop out real easy and then the ability where they short out from tip to sleeve as you pull it out of the jack. They take all the cons, all the bad things about this plug, they make it better and they call it the speak on. This is my 
favorite, favorite connector. This is a four conductor jack and plug system. So there's the four conductors on the back of the jack. There's four conductors in here. One of the beauties about this, it's a quarter turn twist lock. Once you turn it quarter turn, it locks in and it's not coming out. You just made four connections just like that. To release it, you pull back and you turn a quarter turn and you pull out. Not only that, every time you pull it in and out, the way the tabs are formed, it's wiping or sweeping off the oxidation that builds up. So every time we make a mechanical connection and then we unmake the mechanical connection, we're cleaning the contacts in here. You can solder on the back or you can use crimp connectors to make your mechanical connection with your wires. This is a four conductor. They make a two, I don't use the two, but here's the big boy. This is the eight conductor version of the Speak On. Here's one of my typical stage boxes. You can see Speak On jacks here. They're color coded. Neutrik makes these rings to go around the jack so you can color coat your, your connections. But here's four channels of audio. We've got a house left, house right, aux one, aux two. My snake is an eight conductor snake. Quarter turn, I just made eight mechanical connections just like that. I love this thing. I have a snake that is 16 connectors, so it's eight channels of audio. I have two of these bad boys on the snake and it allows me to pull out and plug in real quick, especially when you're doing setup and tear down on shows, time is money. Not only is this a great mechanical connection, this is a mechanical connection that you don't have to solder. You take a number two screwdriver, strip back your wires, stick them in, tighten it down, and call it a day. Okay, it's time for a few honorable mentions. I think everybody by now knows how I feel about the quarter inch plug and jack system and how I feel about the speak on jack and plug system. Well, I use this as much as I can and I try to use this as little as I can. Well, I build speakers and I put on speaker jacks and this would be a typical speaker jack for quarter, uh, for speak on, okay? But I don't wanna limit myself to the customer or to the audience because there may still be a lot of people using the quarter inch plug system. So Neutrik made this adapter. This is a combo adapter. Speak on and quarter inch jack. The mechanical advantages are not as good as this jack is, but it still allows us for a quarter inch jack to go in or a speak on jack, okay? These are worth having if you're trying to bridge two markets, but still trying to bring people over to the speak on system. And speaking about combo jacks, you may have seen something like this. This is a combo jack between quarter inch tip ring sleeve and an XLR. That's what the back looks like. And the cool thing about this is you can actually wire the quarter inch jack independently of the XLR. So they give you complete control on how you wire this. If you want the quarter inch to be paralleled with the XLR, you just jump her back here. But that's a quarter inch. Here's an XLR. That's a great space saving device. On my recording rack, I have these to where I can plug in either a quarter inch or an XLR input and save half the space. The BNC. The BNC was patented in 1951 by Paul Neal of Bell Labs and Carl Councilman of Amphenol. It's a bayonet. It's a bay. It's a bayonet style locking connector. So they called it the Bayonet Neal Councilman. That's the BNC. This is the 50 ohm application where we would use this as an antenna, but if we were using this for a networking or video, we'd jump up to 75 ohms. Same connector, BNC. RJ45. RJ45, I grew up calling these the phone plug or phone jack, but I think we all know by now this is called the phone plug or phone jack. So RJ stands for registered jack. We can use these in digital snakes in our sound system or also our networking. Most of our audio devices now have network jacks or ports for updating firmware or adding wireless options. This is a D-Series RJ45 jack. This is the RJ45 plug. Neutrik also makes a locking barrel that adds a lot of strength and you treat it like a regular XLR where you have to push in the tab and then pull it out. The IEC plug and jack. If you have a computer or any electronic devices, you've probably seen something like this. A U-ground on this side, IEC plug on this side. IEC stands for International Electrotechnical Commission Standards. Now this plug is called the IEC 60320 and it's the C13 version. 
<laughs> I don't like these things. This has happened to me once where I did not have the IEC seated in the jack all the way and I was making a loose mechanical connection. I had a piece of equipment shut down on me because I didn't have this pushed in all the way. Now the IECs, they'll come in right angles, left angles, ups and downs or straight. And then finally, the PowerCon. Neutrik has done it again. Just like how they took the Speakon and made a better mechanical connector, they've taken the IEC plug and jack system and they've come up with the PowerCon. This is a 120 volts twist lock locking connector. This takes all the problems that we have with the IEC plugs and jacks and it gets rid of them. I wish more manufacturers would adopt this protocol and get away from the IEC. Now PowerCon has two different types of this platform. This is a 20 amp connector. This is power going into a device. And if we need to pull power out, we have the white version. This is just a breakout strip for using for stage lighting. This would be like a power strip on regular outlets. Gang, we made it. Next time you look at a piece of equipment like this, this is the ATM Mini by Blackmagic Design you'll have a lot more understanding and information to arm yourself with making better choices. This piece of equipment has five of the eight connectors that we just talked about. The quarter inch jack, XLR, BNC, RJ45, and IEC. We didn't talk about the RS-232 or the HDMI or the USB. That's a whole nother video. I'm wiped out. Thanks for watching the video. My name's Jude and this is my sound advice.